Hey folks, uh, this lesson, Center, Shape, Center, and Spread. This is part one of section 20.2 for Integrated Math 3. So we just got a new dog. I found one in front of my classroom. And uh, you can probably hear her rustling in the background with uh, our other dog. So her name's Lucy. His name is Chucky. Anyways, it's early in the morning and they play every morning. So which measure of center or spread are appropriate for normal distribution and which are appropriate for skewed distribution? We'll answer more of that in the second part here. So here we go. So here's the distribution of birth months of 20 randomly selected babies born at a hospital. Okay, so here's the birth month. So this would be May, this would be July, this would be November, February, and so on. Okay, and there's 20 babies right there. So let's make a, a line plot. So we've done line plots before. You might have forgotten, so this is what we do. And so we just put X's above um, each number. So here's the months 1 through 12 down here. And so we'll just go ahead and put an X above above uh, the 5 for that guy right there. And the next one is 7, so we'll put an X above that one. Okay, and then 11, and then 2, and then 10, and 3, and so on. You get the picture, right? 4. And then once we get to 7, we just start stacking them. Just make sure that you're evenly stacking them, because then we talk about the distribution. So there's all the rest of them right there. And we'll talk about this distribution, which is our, our data here. <clears throat> in just a bit okay so here's the distribution of the birth weights of those babies in kilograms okay so what we're going to do is make a line plot of that distribution okay so I see some numbers all the way down to I don't know 3.2 I think and then all the way up to about um, I think that's the biggest one 3.8 so just make sure your line covers that so I went from 3 to 4 all right, and again, we just uh, plot, so we'll put an X above 3.3, so an X would go right there, an X would go above 3.6, and then stack them uh, when you get more than one. So most of them were 3.5 kilograms right there, okay? All right, so we'll talk about that shape in just a minute, okay? And here's the distribution of the mother's ages of those babies, okay? So I see some mamas that are as young as, um, oh, heck, uh, 28, I think, is the smallest one I see right there, and then all the way up to 39 right there, okay? So let's make a line plot of that distribution right there, okay? So when we do that, we get uh, that right there, okay? And we'll talk about that shape in just a second, okay? All right, so, um, and then this information, I just didn't want to give you that big old table right there, so because you guys get overwhelmed when you see that, but that's all that is, is that. So here was the birth months that we wrote down, the birth weights, and then the mother's age, okay? And so there was 20 of them, okay? Here's babies one through 10, 11 through 20, okay? Anyway. So shapes of distributions, okay? A distribution whose shape is basically level, looks like a rectangle sort of, is called a uniform distribution. We had one of those, okay? And then uh, bell-shaped uh, curves are rounded in the middle with symmetrical tails. They're called normal distributions. Those are the ones we like to target a lot. So, um, uh, And then if it has a bigger mound on one side but it's not symmetrical, because you have a tail that's longer on the other side, uh, it's called a skewed distribution, okay? So here's a skewed left right here. Here's a, a symmetrical distribution, and here's a skewed right. So whichever one has the tail, this has the tail going off on the right, and there's more on the left over here. This one's more on the right, and it's uh, it's skewed to the left right here. Okay, so um, uh, anyway, so uh, let's go ahead and get going here. So describe the shapes of each line plot in section A. So this one, this one was uh, it looks sort of more like a rectangle. So that would have been a uniform distribution right there. How about this one, the birth weights right there? Well, that one's a nice bell-shaped curve, so a normal curve right there, normal distribution. This one was definitely skewed to the right because the tail's at the right. My, my little dogs like to play. Uh, I like to throw the ball while I'm sitting here anyway. So anyway, so center and spread. Okay, so everybody's done the mean, the average. You add up the numbers and divide by the number of numbers. So we call this X bar, and this is our sample mean. And we'll talk more about uh, the population mean in the next lesson, which is... Uh, we use a Greek symbol that's called mu for population mean, but typically we get a sample mean, and this was of those sample, those 20 babies right there, okay? And then we have um, uh, the median. The median is the middle number, and you guys have done that before. Uh, after you arrange them from smallest to biggest or biggest to smallest, 
Uh, and if there's an even number of numbers, then you take the average of those two numbers that are in the middle, okay? If there's an odd number of numbers, it's just the middle one. That's the median right there. Sorry, my, my little Lucy's wanted me to play ball with her here. So, so uh, anyway, so um, uh, the third quartile, you guys, is the median of the upper half. And so when I'm in my class, I'm, I have my numbers or my hands spread out. And I say, here's the numbers already arranged from smallest to biggest. So imagine, and I'm spreading my, my hands out right now. And I have them arranged from smallest to biggest. And then right in the middle is the median. And then, and then I put my hand where the median is. And I keep my, my left hand, which to you it looks like my right hand. It's my right side over there. So I have my hand in the middle, and I have my uh, hand out at the biggest number right there. And I say, okay, now the median of the upper half is the third quartile. Okay, and you, you typically exclude the median when you calculate the quartile. So once you get the median, pretend like it's not there and back uh, uh, off one right there. Okay. So, um, and then the, the first quartile is the median of the lower half of data. Okay, and then this thing that's called the interquartile range, which is called the IQR, is just Q3 minus Q1. And so it's just uh, talks about the center and the spread. So um, we'll do box plots in the next lesson, and so we'll need this stuff later. So then we got this thing called the standard deviation, and all statistical people love standard deviation. So any kind of pharmaceutical stuff any kind of uh, political stuff, anything. Um, uh, insurance uh, agencies love standard deviation. So this is how you calculate the standard deviation. You take, if you find the mean first of the numbers, that's what this X bar is right here. And then you do each number minus the mean, the next number minus the mean, and you square them. So sometimes they're negative, you guys, but when you square them, they're positive, okay? So each number minus the mean squared, next number minus the mean squared, and you do that and divide it by the number of numbers and then square root all of that, and that's where we get our standard deviation. Okay, so let's calculate the center and the spread of the mother's ages here. Okay, so here's the mother's ages. Well, let's first rearrange them from smallest to biggest. And I just used uh, our line plot. That helped, really helped me. So I can see there was 228s, there was 429s, 430s. So here they are, 228s. 429s, 430s, and so on. So, so um, uh, the mean is the average of the numbers. So we just add them all up, and they added up to 623. Divided by 20, you get 31.5. Okay, so the median is the average of the two middle numbers, because there were 20 numbers. So here's the the tenth and the eleventh number right there. So the median is 30.5, okay? Now we don't use this to calculate the first and third quartile. So we back up one and then we go over here and then find the first quartile over here. So the first quartile, there's ten numbers from here to here. So it's the fifth and sixth number right there. Okay, so here's the fifth and sixth number. So when we average those guys and then starting from here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Here's the fifth and sixth number. So quartile three is the average of 32 and 33. And quartile one is that. So there's Q1 and Q3. So the IQR is just the difference of those, which is 3.5. Okay, now here's the bear, you guys. So now we got to find the standard deviation, okay? So remember, the mean was 31, 31.15. So we're going to do each number 28 minus 31.15 squared and then the next 28 minus 31.15 squared and keep doing that all the way up to 39 minus 31.15 squared and then we take that and divide it by 20. So I did that right here you guys so there were two 28s okay and then there was four 29s there was four 30s so I just I just kept doing that and then there was uh, three um, 31, so 31 minus, whoops, 31 minus um, uh, 31.15 is a negative 0.15. So I'm just multiplying them. And so I did that right here. So here they are right there. There's that numerator right there. I'm just, I'm getting all these. Now I square them. So I do the squared times 2, and that gets me this right here. So I square that, gets me that, times 4 is that. So Here's all those numbers squared, and now I gotta add those up, okay? So that's the numerator, okay? So that is this guy right here. So it's gonna be 136.55 divided by 20, and then we square root that, okay? Well, yeah, divided by 20 and square root that, so our standard deviation is about uh, 2.61. 
All right, you guys, sorry for the long lesson, but it's pretty easy. It's just number crunching, you guys. Okay, take care.